The Horus Heresy is getting a brand new addition, and with it comes a whole slew of brand new miniatures, many of which are contained within the Age of Darkness box. Games Workshop sent me this box a number of weeks ago with instructions to build and paint its contents as the 12th Legion, more commonly known as the World Eaters. This was no small task though, as this box contained 40 brand new Mark VI Tactical Marines, 10 Cataphracti Terminators, a plastic Spartan Assault Tank, a multi-part multi-post Contemptor, and finally, two new Praetors to lead them all. A grand total of 54 miniatures. But of course, I couldn't just leave the kit as is. I would need to add a little World Eater flair to them as well. Being the most numerous part of this army, I began this mammoth task by starting on the Mark VI Marines. I had come to the decision that converting each and every model in the army would have made a huge amount of additional work, so I chose to keep the conversion work light, limiting it to just a few leaders, specifically the four sergeants and the two praetors. I began with the former of these and set about removing the parts required to build one of the Mark VI sergeants. From here, these parts were then cleaned up of any mold lines and remaining sprue tabs. When it came to conversion parts, Forge World seemed to be the best option. I perked up the Legion Phobos chain axe set to give my sergeant some iconic World Eater weapons and some World Eater's veteran heads for that classic bunny ears look. However, as these parts are made from resin rather than plastic, they needed a little more work before they could be used. I removed the parts from their packets and added them to a bowl of hot soapy water. I left them to stew for a bit before scrubbing them with an old toothbrush. This just helped to remove any mold release agents left on the parts, which would have caused issues in gluing and painting these later on. Once they'd been rinsed and dried, I then shaved away any mold lines and sprue tabs on the pieces using my scalpel. With all the parts prepped, I could begin assembly. I built the plastic parts of the sergeant first and attached the arms. Luckily, the sergeant's arms within the Mark VI already come without hands attached. This made them perfect for mixing in forge world components. While I'd used plastic glue for the plastic parts of the model, I made the switch to super glue for the resin pieces. Plastic glue works by melting and bonding plastic together, but as it doesn't melt resin, I had to use super glue for these parts instead. Once I'd built all four sergeants in this way, I then had to work out how I wanted to base my army. I needed something that worked well with the force, both thematically and visually, but it also needed to be pretty simple to achieve. I ultimately settled on a simple Badlands style. This would feature sand, scrub, and a few scattered rocks. The former of these would come later, but for now I could add the rocks. I created these easily and cheaply by tearing up some cork floor tiles into small chunks. With a little superglue, these were then attached to the model's bases. With the small conversions complete, I could begin to work on the rest of the squad, which I would build as per the instructions. However, to speed up the process of assembling so many legionaries, I broke down the assembly into a series of batches. I would first remove the parts required to build the torso and the legs. Unlike previous Horus Heresy kits, these torsos came pre-attached to the legs, much like Primus kits do. While this did remove the possibility offered by a ball and socket joint, it allows the torso's bodies to have a more realistic looking pose and generally better scaling. Incidentally, the scaling on these miniatures was fantastic. The Mark 6s are not only a little taller than the older armor marks, they are also better proportioned and look a little less squat overall. This leaves them standing at roughly the same height as the newer Chaos Space Ring kit, but still shorter than Primaris. With the parts removed, they need to be cleaned up of any mold lines and sprue tabs, which was easily the most time-consuming part of this process. I used my knife to trim away the tabs, but tested out some sanding sticks on the mold lines. These did prove to be pretty effective, and helped to speed up that mold line removal. However, where they did fall down was on the harder to reach areas, and for these, I fell back onto my knife. I also found that they tended to wear down fairly quickly too, and I found myself having to switch to fresh ones a few times. This could have been the particular ones I had bought though. While the majority of the model was straightforward to build, one tricky area was the left shoulder pad, which came in two halves. On the face of it, it seems like a strange choice, but when compared to other studded shoulder pads, the studs do look much more defined. Even so, I couldn't really use regular glue alone to fill in that central seam, 
Using green stuff would add a considerable amount of time to my build, so I instead opted to use some sprue glue instead. This is essentially a pot of plastic glue which has had lumps of sprue dumped into it. The glue melted into the plastic glue to create this kind of paste. I applied this sprue glue onto the seam and used it to bond the two halves of the shoulder pad together, squeezing hard so that the paste was squeezed out from the seam. This was then left to harden overnight. From here, I used my knife to scrape away any protruding plastic, revealing a smoother surface beneath and hiding that bond. With each of these steps complete, my miniatures each consisted of a base model alongside separate shoulder pads and a power pack. These were kept apart from the rest of the model as they would be painted blue, whereas the bulk of the armor would be painted white. By not gluing everything together yet, I could more easily paint these parts without the fear of overspilling or getting into those harder to reach areas. Following the regular marines, I then tackled the cataphracti. These are the only pre-existing kits within the box set and were built and based using pretty much the same process as the marines. The only thing I left separate for these guys were their shoulder pads. At this stage, I had finished building all the rank and file of the army and had made a significant dent into the 54 models, but I still had the beast of an armored vehicle to construct, the Spartan. This is a complete plastic redesign of the resin Spartan sold by Forgeworld. This meant it was far easier to build than its previous iteration. The parts fit together well and being plastic was much easier to work with. Even so, I didn't feel that the detail was lacking as a result. The front compartment had a fully detailed interior and the option to have opening and closing ramps to show it off. But to save a bit of time at the painting stage, I decided to glue mine shut. The Spartan also came with a whole range of options too. I was given the choice between hull mounted last cannons or heavy bolters, and the choices for pintle mounted weapons and crew are also numerous. The only disadvantage of it being multi part plastic was that it took an awfully long time to clean up and assemble all of those individual plastic parts. But even so, the resulting vehicle looks fantastic and it wouldn't look out of place among the older kits. I think fans of the original will be really happy with this new kit and I'm sure that a few Space Marine and Chaos Space Marine players will be including it in their 40k forces too. You will notice that I opted to keep the sponsor and weapons and all of my track sections separate here. This will just make everything easy to paint later on. From one vehicle to another, I then began to assemble my Contemptor. Again, this is a new kit with the biggest improvement over the old kit being the multi-part, multi-pose nature of it. There are lots of joints to work with here, so it's possible to get some pretty dynamic poses with it. Although saying that, these can be a bit fiddly to do, especially with so many movable parts. You have shoulders, elbows, two points at the waist, the hips, knees and ankles, all of which can be tweaked. So maybe do some dry fitting with a little putty first and don't bring in the glue until you're happy with it. Much like when I assembled the Spartan, I decided to keep the arms separate from the rest of the Contemptor's body. Keeping these apart would make painting both the torso easier to reach and mean I can paint the blue shoulder sections of the arms much easier. So that I would have something to hold onto during painting, I used my usual pinning technique by drilling holes and inserting metal wires to create some simple component holders. This brought me to the final two models of my army to build, the Praetors. These would also be the most heavily converted of the entire army. If you want to include a little theming in your army, but don't wish to go too heavy on the conversion work, then just tackling a couple of key characters can go a long way. I began with the Sword Praetor, and the key change here would be swapping out a sword for a much more fitting chain axe. To do this, I began by comparing the Praetor Sword carrying hand against one of the Phobos carrying axes that I'd used in the Sergeants earlier. I then clipped away the sword carrying hand at the wrist before shaving it flat. Onto this wrist, I then used a little super glue to attach the axe hand to it. From here, I then moved onto the stomach plate, which seemed a little too ostentatious for a fairly straightforward legion like the World Eaters. So with my scalpel, I began to make a series of small cuts to remove that detail, paying close attention to not damage the areas around it. Once removed, I then held the knife perpendicular to the surface of the plate and used a scraping motion to flatten out that surface. With the detailing removed, I then moved on to assembling the rest of the body and replacing the mustachioed head with the kit comes with. 
I wanted something that demonstrated a little more rage, and I ultimately settled on this Primus Intercessor head. This would fit nicely into the existing neck joint without any additional modifications. The base kit come with a cape, but I found that this would be a little too over the top for my World Eaters. A detail that would be better left to the more flamboyant legions. Fortunately, the parts of the model beneath the cape were perfectly sculpted, with no flattened or obscured areas. This meant that all I needed to do was to replace the shoulder pads which did have the cape sculpted onto them. While the model is wearing a variant of Mark VI, I chose to equip my Praetor with shoulder pads taken from one of my favourite kits, the Mark III. As with the cape, I didn't feel that the small banner pole was suitable for the appearance I was looking to create, so this was promptly clipped away before being shaved back. Once I'd finished the Praetor and could see everything coming together, I realised that the chain axe was a little too small. It wasn't imposing enough for a leader, and so I would need to go back and swap it out with a cataphractic chain axe instead. I just want to say a big thank you to Henry from Call to Paint for helping me source one of these. The cataphractic's hand was a little too big, so I would have to remove the axe from it, making my cuts as close to the fist as possible. This process was then repeated on the Praetor's hand, leaving it in place on the arm. In order to attach the new axe to the original hand, I opted to do a little pinning. This involved drilling a hole through both halves of the axe and all the way through the hand, across the palm. Into the hole in the axe head, I superglued a small piece of wire that was just long enough to protrude just a little bit at the bottom of the hand. Onto this exposed piece of wire beneath the hand, I then glued the axe handle into place, completing the first Praetor. The second Praetor was much more straightforward. The huge axe he was carrying was already perfect for the World Eaters. However, like with the previous Praetor, I did decide to omit the cape. But in order to attach the replacement Mark III shoulder pads, I needed to trim the Praetor's shoulders back a little. Once these were removed, the Mark III shoulder pad could be placed over the top. And with that, my army was built and ready to be painted. But rather than drag this video on for another 15 minutes, I thought I'd separate it out into its own dedicated tutorial that I could go a bit more in depth with. But rather than leave you with nothing, here you can see some of my completed Mark VI Tactical Marines. For the rest of the army though, you will need to wait until next time. I do hope that you've been able to glean a few useful tips on how you can make both your army building a little easier and how you can modify your own Horus Heresy miniatures to represent those of the 12th Legion. So before I go, just let me say a huge thank you to those who make these videos possible, my wonderful patrons. Currently my top supporters on Patreon are Jonathan Hart, Ryan Little, Tim, Berserker, Daniel Dowling, Jake, Jesse Smith, Morgan, Mr. Grimm, and Swedsman. So a big thank you to you guys, and if you also support me on Patreon, do channel membership, or you just use my affiliates links. And it is the kind-hearted people such as yourselves that allow me to fund the tools and paints required to create these videos for you. And so until next time, thanks for watching, and goodbye. <laughs>